Indiana News Desk is made possible in part by Smithville, Fiber Internet, Streaming TV, Home Security and Automation in Southern Indiana. More information at smithville.com. Mallor Grodner Attorneys, providing legal services to clients and the community. Understanding, expertise, results. Bloomington and Indianapolis, lawmg.com. IU Alumni Association, connecting IU's network of alumni and sharing the Indiana spirit through scholarships, advocacy, and volunteerism. Alumni.iu.edu. IU Center for Rural Engagement, extending IU Bloomington resources to improve Hoosier lives in partnership with communities and organizations. Rural.indiana.edu. And by WTIU members. Thank you. Coming up on Indiana News Desk. Eighth grade science teachers are required to teach climate change in Indiana, but getting a hold of materials can be tough. You might have a purchased curriculum that's excellent, but on a topic like climate change, by the time the book is published, it's already out of date. Presidential hopeful Pete Buttigieg is sharing his foreign policy agenda with those in his home state. And Walmart's plan to stop its greeter program is putting meaningful work out of reach for some seniors and disabled folks. But one Indiana woman isn't ready to quit. Before I started this, I had people tell me that I can't work. I, like I'm saying, take the cat out of the idea. Those stories, plus the latest news headlines from across the state, right now on Indiana News Desk. Welcome to Indiana News Desk, I'm Joe Wren. Well, for many students in Indiana, eighth grade is the first and last time they'll focus on climate change in class. Many high school students are encouraged to take courses that prepare them for college, like chemistry and biology, instead of environmental science. Now, that puts a lot of pressure on eighth grade science teachers to teach the subject right. But as Indiana Public Broadcasting's Rebecca Thiel reports, many struggle to find up-to-date, reputable materials for their lesson plans. In March, kids around the world skipped class to demand their leaders take action on climate change. But middle schoolers at Center for Inquiry School 27 in Indianapolis did something different. They set up a fair to teach younger kids about climate change and what they can do to help. We're doing it because it's real and it's very important for younger kids to know that this could be that their future and the world could be messed up if we don't take a stand now. Jackson's science teacher, Lori Baker, says she spends countless hours sifting through climate change info to make her lesson plans. So when she received a professional-looking booklet in the mail a few years ago, she was excited. And then I actually started just flipping through and realized that's certainly not what it was. It was from the Heartland Institute, a conservative think tank that denies people cause climate change. Baker says she was frustrated. No one has ever reached out to me as a middle school science teacher ever to give me information about climate science, except the Heartland Institute. They were the only ones that took the time to send me a book about climate change. According to the eighth grade science standard, students are required to research global temperatures over the past century and compare and contrast data in relation to the theory of climate change. But some teachers say the curriculum isn't cutting it. You might have a purchased curriculum that's excellent, but on a topic like climate change, by the time the book is published, it's already out of date. Martha Bowman teaches science at Tri-North Middle School in Bloomington. If we just were to use a textbook, then we would be selling our kids short. Many teachers have to wade through endless information online. And this isn't just an Indiana problem. It's a national problem. National Science Teachers Association Executive Director David Evans says it's only just recently, since 2013, that we started requiring teachers to teach climate change in this country. And it takes a while for materials to be, uh, for the adoption to take place, and it takes a while to, uh, to produce quality instructional materials to, to help out. We talked about climate is the, the normal weather in a certain place over a long period of time. 
Keith Morey at Centerville Abington Junior High shows his students an animated map from NASA that looks at how average temperatures have changed since the late 1800s. What do we notice? Most of the Earth is hot, well, or above average, right. Many of the teachers we interviewed relied on materials from NASA. But Maury says not everything is as accessible, especially when you have kids at different levels of ability. He says several students, and even some adults, still struggle with the difference between climate and weather. Yes, you can make a snowball and still have a changing climate that's getting warmer. Curtis Moffitt teaches at Eastern Green Middle. It's in a rural district about half an hour southwest of Bloomington. He says sometimes kids will come into class with their own ideas about climate change, mostly what they've learned from their families. I don't like to tell kids what to think. I like to give them a lot of information, and then we discuss and just say, what, what do you think, where do you stand, and why do you feel that way? While we talked to several teachers for this story, it's impossible to tell what's going on in every eighth grade science classroom in Indiana. Lori Baker says she worries about the teachers that can't dedicate as much time and resources to the subject as she does. Especially for a topic that's already difficult, challenging, controversial, and perhaps not exactly supported, depending on where you are. We'll have a link to resources and tips for science teachers on our website. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Rebecca Thiel. Now for headlines, we go over to Alex Eady, who has the latest on this week's top stories. Thanks, Joe. One person has been arrested and charged after the release of videos showing animals being abused at Fair Oaks Farm. The arrest comes after the videos were released by the group Animal Recovery Mission. 36-year-old Edgar Gardanzo Vasquez faces a felony charge of torturing or mutilating animals and a misdemeanor charge of animal cruelty. There are warrants out for two other employees shown hurting animals in the videos. Indiana tax revenues are well positioned to finish the fiscal year strong after the state brought in more money than expected in May. And total state revenues are well ahead of the forecasted pace with just one month to go before the end of the fiscal year. Tax collections through May are about $156 million better than budget writers anticipated. That means when state leaders close the books next month, it's unlikely money will, will need to be shifted around to cover any shortfalls or boost the state's budget reserves. This week, South Bend Mayor Democratic South Bend Mayor and Democratic candidate for President Pete Buttigieg stopped in Bloomington on his campaign trail. Buttigieg laid out his foreign policy priorities in front of thousands during a speech at Indiana University. Pete Buttigieg says he feels ready to bridge the gap from mayor to international leader. He spoke on the importance of building global relationships as avenues through which foreign policy is carried out. But he criticized the Trump administration for lacking clear foreign policy vision. Decisions are made impulsively, erratically, emotionally, and politically, often delivered by means of early morning tweet, with little regard for strategy and no preparation for their long-term consequences. He says the duties for the next president are clear, which include reversing the rise of authoritarianism abroad and refocusing on future security threats. We must do all this while involving citizens across America in a meaningful conversation about how foreign policy and national security concern their communities and do more to include their voices and values in formulating our policies. As a former Navy Reserve officer deployed to Afghanistan in 2014, Buttigieg emphasized the need for more veteran care resources. He also demanded an end to what he calls endless war. We should never again send troops into conflict without a clear definition of their mission and an understanding of what will come after. Nearly three hours before Buttigieg took the stage, hundreds from all over waited outside the IU Auditorium to get a seat. I feel like he just cares about America. He wants to bring everybody together. Um, I think he's a person who can bring everybody together because he, he wants to talk to everybody, even if you're way on the other side. Buttigieg says the prominence of Indiana University as a global institution makes Bloomington the perfect community in which to deliver his message. Foreign policy needs to come home and also it needs to include the voices of the heartland. And to, so to see uh, a global institution of international relevance uh, right here in the heart of Indiana, I couldn't think of a better way to feature that. 
Buttigieg says as president he would recommit the U.S. to the Paris Climate Agreement. He says that would be part of a strategy to address climate change as a clear and present threat. The Indiana Department of Natural Resources says a conservation officer responded to wildlife in need last week after a worker was bitten by a hyena. According to a statement from the facility, the, workers, the worker is on the mend. A spokesperson with the U.S. Department of Agriculture is looking into the incident. Wildlife in Need has a permit to operate from the USDA. People for the ethical treatment of animals is suing Wildlife in Need over a 2017 report that claims Wildlife in Need botched a declawing procedure on two tiger cubs. This year's Indiana Recycling Coalition Conference focused less on recycling and more on reducing and reusing. Keynote speaker Ken Miller says China's refusal to take the United States low-grade recycling is forcing some communities to think about a more holistic approach. Any one of these goals would be tough to do, but we got 17 of them to work on. So we need something that's more transformative than just going and working on single projects at a time. Miller says if companies knew that a product would be returned to them one day, they'd make it more durable and reusable. He says this kind of circular economy requires all kinds of jobs, including manufacturing and transportation. A Monroe County Circuit Court judge saw evidence and heard arguments this week over a dispute between property owners on Lake Monroe. It's one of a number of lawsuits involving landowner Joe Huff, who is logging on his land close to nearby residents. The residents' attorneys say an easement granted to a property Huff owns cannot be extended to an adjacent property also owned by Huff. Huff's attorney argues that once Huff bought both, both adjacent properties, the easement use applies because it shouldn't be considered as one contiguous landmass. Monroe County Judge Holly Harvey says she'll examine the arguments and issue a final ruling at a later date. Officials with the Hoosier National Forest are drawing attention to an effort to preserve forest openings. As Rebecca Thiel reports, these are pockets in the forest where older trees have been cut down to make way for younger trees, shrubs, and grasses. Out here you can look around and see the diversity that we have in this opening. And and you can look across the other side of this fence row that there is no active management and you can tell the difference between the two of more species versus when we're actually out here helping it kind of promoting it that along. King says before people started changing the landscape these openings were created naturally through things like forest fires. So we're trying to bring back this habitat that once was here and has now gone away because uh, we as humans have kind of stopped that flow King says about 4,000 acres of the Hoosier National Forest is set aside for these clearings. They're good habitat for species like the ruffed grouse, which the state says is on track for extinction. But activists with the Indiana Forest Alliance say cutting down trees in public forests isn't necessary because there are other parts of the state dedicated to preserving grasslands. The practice also promotes the growth of younger trees and shrubs. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Rebecca Thiel. Dry weather last week allowed Hoosier farmers to make progress planting their crops, but this season still lags far behind previous ones. Two-thirds of Indiana's corn crop was in the ground as of June 9th, but in years past, almost all of Indiana's corn was in the ground. Experts estimate about 2 million unplanted acres of corn are left across the state, and soybeans also lag far behind previous years. Farmers say planting corn anytime after June 1st is risky. And plans for a new senior center on Bloomington's east side will move ahead after gaining final funding approval from the city council. Susan Sandberg says the funding will be instrumental for the senior community and a number of other demographics. The whole range of social need in this community is met in a fairly significant way by the public investment in the Jack Hopkins Social Services Fund. The council voted to approve grant funds from the Jack Hopkins Social Services Funding Program. The program allocates over $300,000 in grant funds to 27 local agency programs, including just under $10,000 to expand programming for seniors through the Enright Center. The center is a test project among Area 10, Bloomington Parks and Recreation, the Commission on Aging, and the IU Health Alzheimer's Resource Center. 
Area 10 officials plan to open the new Enright Center east this coming Tuesday with a grand opening Thursday, June 20th. And Joe, they say that um, that center is slated for the College Mall, actually in the former Payless Shoe Store location. Oh, I have a feeling that might be a successful program. Yeah, we will see. Alex, thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Coming up next on Indiana News Desk. Walmart is phasing out its greeter program, but one disabled Hoosier is figuring out how to make it work for her. And have you ever wondered where you can and cannot have your pets off leash? We take a bird's eye view of leash laws in Bloomington. These stories and more right here on Indiana News Desk. The WTIU WFIU News Team connects Indiana to the world. We bring you the top news of the day on radio, TV, and online. We round up the stories that have people talking each week and dig deep into the issues that affect your community the most. The WTIU WFIU News Team is where you are and telling your story. In a time of change, where can you find in-depth reporting and thoughtful analysis? Washington Week on PBS. Join moderator Robert Costa. When I was at the Capitol this week, I encountered the same... And a panel of award-winning journalists. You're seeing a divided nation and you're seeing... For insights and perspective. Tonight there was a key development in the You Senate won't find anywhere else. What a week. Washington Week. Welcome back to Indiana News Desk. Across the country, about a thousand Walmart greeters lost their jobs this spring. For years, they were the first person you saw when you entered one of the discount stores. The move to eliminate the positions hit workers with disabilities particularly hard. Adam Pinsker joins us now with the story. Walmart is eliminating the greeter position and replacing it with what they call customer hosts. Among the responsibilities, greeting customers, of course, and trying to deter shoplifters. However, the job requires being on your feet for several hours and lifting up to 25 pounds, which for people who are disabled may not be very possible. For more than 20 years, Bonnie Haysmeyer worked part-time greeting people at the entrance to this Walmart in Fishers. It's real nice to have the opportunity to work. But Haysmeyer, who has cerebral palsy, was afraid her career at the retail giant would end after Walmart eliminated the greeter position. So I went immediately to my manager and asked ask, ask them if they were going to let me go or what they were going to do about it. But after some cajoling by Haysmeyer, the store manager reassigned her. In Garden Center for the spring and then in the winter in electronics as a security were there as a security person. Haysmeyer says she's lucky Walmart was able to accommodate her despite her disability. The Walmart greeter positions were usually filled by seniors or people with disabilities, so advocates say losing that position means there is one less option for them. The unemployment rate for people with disabilities tends to be double that of uh, people w without disabilities. Manager of Vocational Services for New Hope of Indiana, Patrick Mitchell, says his organization provides job coaches to help disabled people find work. Sometimes it's easier to look at the more mom and pop sort of operations because there's not so much of the corporate structure in place that would, that would keep um, barriers in place for those individuals to get hired. Like New Hope, Stonebelt provides resources for people with disabilities. Director of Development Vita Dewey says many local businesses in Bloomington have gone out of their way to put disabled people to work. Rolling silverware at a restaurant. We've had um, many places where restaurants over the years have done that and somebody will come in for a few hours a day and do that and typically in the past that was part of the waitress's job when they weren't busy. Dewey says working is not just a source of income but a source of pride for people with physical and intellectual disabilities. When she isn't working at Walmart, Bonnie retreats to her study in her North Indianapolis home and paints. She sells some of her artwork on the weekends. And I like proving people wrong. Haysmeyer says she hopes employers out there don't underestimate the ability and work ethic of disabled people like herself. Before I started this, I had people tell me that I can't work. I 
Like I'm saying, take the can't out of the idea. There aren't a whole lot of options for these displaced Walmart greeters. The Americans with Disabilities Act only requires that companies make reasonable accommodations for disabled workers, but they still need to perform the essential functions of their job. Now, Walmart says under this pilot program of transforming them into customer hosts, 80% of workers have been reassigned to those positions. The rest have taken a severance pay. Joe, back to you. Thanks, Adam. Now, pets are being made an increasing part of public life, but it's not always clear where they are allowed to go and when they need to be on a leash. In Indiana, it's left mostly to individual communities. As part of our City Limits series, Benta Boutier looks at how Bloomington deals with leash laws. For Ray Baskin sits outside her house on the Beeline Trail with her one-and-a-half-year-old parrot, Willie Mays. She's seen people walk their dogs on the beeline in front of her home without leashes in some cases, which made her wonder about the rules for having companion animals in public areas. Myself, I have a parrot. Um, I do um, take him out when possible, uh, when it's not too hot. So I'm, I'm a little bit uncomfortable when I see dogs that are not on leashes, you know, especially because they look at the the, the look at my parrot and they're curious, which makes sense. City ordinances say all pets, except for cats, must be restrained by a leash in public. In addition, animals can't be a nuisance, which can mean excessive barking or other aggressive behaviors. Baskin says having the same rules for all pets doesn't make sense. You know, you can say, oh, it's a, it's a dog with feathers or it's a cat with feathers. No, <laughs> they are very, very different. These are birds, so birds fly. And if you put a leash on them, then to me, ethically, it's not, it's not ethical. Virgil Souter is the director of animal care and control at the Bloomington Animal Shelter. He says Baskin is completely within her rights to exercise her parrot without a leash when she's on her property. Souter says the animal restraint ordinances are in place to protect all animals in public places, and Bloomington's rules are very similar to other communities. And the reason we have confinement laws is to kind of help navigate this, this um, stuff. You have animals, a whole variety of animals. You have animals that get along with almost anything, and you have animals that are very selective, and that includes dogs with birds or birds with dogs, all that. So. Um, having an animal properly restrained helps navigate that. Souter says in the case of birds, the restraint rules are important because not everyone knows how to handle them. Not everybody knows what to do if a large bird would fly towards them. That, that is not something we deal with on a daily basis. Baskin does bring Willie Mays out in public to socialize with people. She says that she makes sure to warn people before they approach the parrot. Baskin says it is important for owners to pay close attention to their birds and to train them properly. It's all based on the owner, how they, I would say, work with them, but they all have a personality. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Ben Taboutier. And we want to hear your questions about the changing face of Bloomington. You can join the conversation by going to WTIU.org slash city limits to ask your questions about the past, present and future of the city of Bloomington. Well, these days, most video gaming consoles operate with digital files. You no longer have to buy chunky cartridges or CDs, but there's quite a market for those vintage games. Adam Pinsker introduces us to a local collector who has some games that are almost 40 years old and worth thousands of dollars. So in here we have the collection. Stepping into Todd Curtis's basement game room is like taking a trip back in time. This is a... Uh how the Atari 2600 work. You had these cartridges, plug it in. This Atari game console is virtually an antique now, but Curtis had the foresight to hang on to it long after Atari's popularity waned. Then he jumped on to the Nintendo bandwagon. So that was my Christmas request that year was an NES, um, Super Mario Brothers. Um, I think I got Rad Racer and um, Kid Icarus. But it's some of the games that have never been played that will catch your attention, specifically because of their price tag. One that's complete in its box, that's in that kind of condition, which is basically new, uh, 
My best guess would be thirty-five to forty thousand dollars. Curtis says he bought a majority of his games from video stores that were getting rid of them to make more space. I think I got really serious about it uh, in about two thousand six. The market for Nintendo games was getting a little excited on eBay. In addition to wall-to-wall -wall games, he also has tons of paraphernalia and collectibles from nearly every era of video gaming. So when I was a, a kid, Gorf was one of my favorite games in the arcade. So Todd decided to buy the actual arcade game once local arcades became extinct. With a collection this vast, you may wonder how does Curtis have time to play all of them? He doesn't. At least not yet. My goal in life is to get through all the things I need to in life as far as work and family and building all up and then spend my entire retirement age down here pulling one game out after another and actually playing them. For an Indiana News Desk, I'm Adam Pinsker. And that's the end of this program, but our work continues online as we cover the news throughout the week at WTIUNews.org. Have a great weekend. Indiana News Desk is made possible in part by Smithville Fiber Internet Streaming TV Home Security and Automation in Southern Indiana. More information at smithville.com. Maller Grodner Attorneys providing legal services to clients and the community. Understanding expertise results. Bloomington and Indianapolis. LawMG.com. IU Alumni Association connecting IU's network of alumni and sharing the Indiana spirit through scholarships, advocacy, and volunteerism. Alumni.iu. Edu. IU Center for Rural Engagement, extending IU Bloomington resources to improve Hoosier lives in partnership with communities and organizations, rural.indiana.edu. And by WTIU members, thank you.